Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live show for oh. Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb, the fourth and final book in the Rain Wild series. Thank God we're through it. <laughs> um, <laughs> finally, through it. My God, is this the penultimate series? Is that the right word? Yes. So close to the end, I'm terrified, but I'm not going to that yet. Um, there is only the two of us right now. We do have cash joiners at some point, possibly some other people. We don't know, but we're just here to wing it, basically. So hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, you said that before we were live, but I've just realised that's actually quite relevant to the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hello, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, Becca, what were your thoughts on the book? We'll do a little tiny spoiler-free part, but um, we can't really be spoiler-free for too long because uh, it is the final book in a series. So it is. Um, so I give it four stars. Um, I think it's my favorite in the series overall, and I just need to adjust my ratings of the past books. Mm. Not that, like because I give the second one five stars when it probably should have been a four. Mm. Um, I didn't love the first half, which is why it got four stars, because I just felt like it was still moving very slowly, but we had lots of plot threads and lots of characters spread out that needed like resolving, um, which so it was annoying me, essentially, that it still had a pretty slow pacing. Um, I did tear up at one part, got a little bit emotional, um, and there's a couple of moments that I really loved, and even though I haven't loved this series, I'm still sad, kind of, you know, because like, the story's over. Mm -hmm. And like I've read so many books, um, but yeah, it's definitely not my favorite Robin Hood book or series at all. But um, there were elements of it that I like, and I think it's just because there's elements of it, like all the Thymara stuff, I don't care about, which is what's dragging the series down. Because while there's some bits that I love, there's some bits that I just could not care less about. Uh, that was basically me with this entire series. <laughs> I was the opposite way around where I just could not care less about all of it besides Malta. Like, I don't think without her little bit of storyline within this series, any would have got more than two stars. This one got three stars because it had like the ending satisfying moments where like things come together, you get a few answers, you see things that you've been waiting for. But yeah, it wasn't my favourite series. <laughs> At all. Definitely not. Especially with book three being kind of point well, not pointless, but shouldn't have been a book on its own. Yeah. We've got some mixed ratings. So <laughs> did not like this one. Especially the second half. There was things about the second half that I didn't like. Like it kept starting to resolve something and then cut until after it had happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. But generally, like the things that happened I did enjoy for most of the second half. Uh, Bex says that every book got better for her. Um, some more people rocking up. Hello, hello. Four stars, four and a half, 3.5, four, four, four. <laughs> got a lot of fours. Um, enjoy the series, but can't wait for Fits in the Fall. I'm a little bit worried because. We don't even have, like, there's people in the chat, like, I know Ewald especially, I think, has read all of them. Um, but even Cass hasn't read the last trilogy, and I don't know if you feel the same, but aside from Fool's Errand being a standout book, I feel like they're all gradually going downhill. Mm -hmm. Like, I really liked the first trilogy, and I love, like, Live Ship Trades is my favourite. But then the way the... Um, Tawny Man is like a book that catches you up on stuff, introduces a conflict that doesn't matter to the series, and then it's kind of a duology. And then this one, which had published issues and was very choppy, and some books were po not pointless but shouldn't have been published on their own. And like how we're doing the thing, like I just said about where you start to resolve something, it cuts away till after the fact. I'm like, is it just that this series is off, or is it like a gradual decline? True. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I feel like my ratings are automatically going to go back up again just because fits. it's fits. It's a story and characters that we know of, at least for the most part. And also you can tell just from the very look of the books that we're going back to what we expect from Robin Hood with it being a trilogy of massive books. <laughs> so it's going to be comforting, I guess, no matter what, as comforting as pure pain can be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm... I'm intrigued. 
um, about how it's going to play out. It's okay, so we've got quite a few people who say, um, oh, Ewald hasn't read all of them. Are um, we all going to go into this just being like, oh my god? <laughs> people have said, I think, was Jennifer one? Yeah, Jennifer said the last is their favourite. Um, so there are a couple of people who really like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rhiannon popped in to say hi. Hello. Hello. I was still like halfway up the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're getting a lot of messages coming like right now. <laughs> yeah. Um there's a lot less of Thaibara's point of view in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because we see the reintroduction of Hest, um the poop like Thaimara and everyone just kind of became irrelevant for a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Horny teens to horny dragons. <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> Um, enjoyed the series but not my favourite this one was my favourite The Bunch hmm. yeah it was uh, it was a weird one we've got some three stars as well three star up until the end the end was five star I would say the end was like a 4.5 so it would have been rounded up to five for me if the rest of the book was on that level the ending was too happy for me. <laughs> but isn't it nice? Like, I thought it was nice to have a happy ending for one. <laughs> Beefy has not finished halfway through. Oh. The Just love all the hob because it feels like a homecoming. Objectively, the series is the least favourite so far, but still five stars. Fair. <laughs> Never read it, make me glad I haven't. <laughs> 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 um, did like that we start to get answers. Still no definitive answer, I think, to how everything connects to Fitz. <laughs> yeah. Really never know at this rate, God knows. <laughs> Just, like, inching towards it very slowly. Yeah. Um, love Chips and Toad, remember my faves. I think I like them equally. This one and the first one are close, but the first beats it. I think the first trilogy for me is still my favourite. Probably because of the nostalgic feel they have, because I did read Assassin's Apprentice. I was going to say Assassin's Blade then. I was like, wrong series. <laughs> <laughs> Very wrong series. Assassin's Apprentice, like so long ago, and then I reread it for this. Um, but Fool's Errand is my favourite so far. To be fair, I think that's the only one that's got five stars from me. Oh, we have. Really? A cast. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> My internet is the worst today. Oh, wow. So I hope everything's okay on your end. <laughs> Everything looks good so far. Yeah. Good. We're still in the non spoiler territory of just general thoughts if you want to jump in and say what your thoughts are. This is the last one of the quartet, right? Mm hmm. I don't know if I have non-spoilery thoughts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your rating? Because we've got quite a variety. What was my rating? Um, let me look. I think this was a four. Um, I think this whole quartet was like overall a four um, because it just didn't like really, really get me. Yeah. Um, there were there were moments, but the moments took so long to get to mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. because like the two middle books really dragged on yeah. um just a touch <laughs> like the last trilogy will be better mm -hmm. uh, what am i looking for i'm looking for my rating it's gonna be really interesting seeing all of our reactions if we all haven't read it and it's just like <laughs> oh yeah i gave it a four four yep no. yep um, let's see. Live ship, Tommy Man, first year. Uh, accurate, accurate, Hannah. That is the right order. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think I prefer Farsia to Tony Man as a trilogy overall. Mm. Fool's Errand is like amazing, but like right. I think as, a, as like trilogies, I mm. think uh, Farsia is a stronger trilogy than Tony Man is. I don't know what mine would be because I would have a conflict over Tony Man and Live Ship. Because Live Ship wasn't my jam. 
but it's also like incredible how it like that's the one that blew my mind in terms I of love right the live traders. there's so say, really nothing that like compares to live ship traders for me yeah i think like i have to say a farcier than live ship than one of them in wilds so far yeah i think this whole quartet everyone every one of them was just a four I mean, better than my ratings have been. <laughs> did you give, how many did you give two, Ashley? Uh, I think two of them got three stars and two of them got two stars. Yeah. I was just unimpressed. <laughs> it is just the, the characters, though. Like, this made me realize how much characters are important to me because I was just like, I just do not care. That's so funny. Is it Hob without a Hob sub? And <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> All the references were five stars. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I don't want to spoil you, Rhiannon. <laughs> oh, you haven't read it. Oh, get to that. No, she <laughs> hasn't quite finished it. Oh, do it. I can't remember if I've rated more than five stars. Maybe I did the, like one of the Farsi ones. I know that Fool's Errand got five stars, but then I think every I'm very reluctant to give things five stars. <laughs> I think I've given, apart from this series, I've given the first two of every trilogy five stars and the last book four. Hmm. And then this one I think is one five star that should have been a four. Like my the ratings as they should be is probably like two threes and two fours. Hmm. Wow, Fitz in the Fool time. Oh, that's because I haven't gotten to all of Fitz in the Fool yet. But Tawny Man over Live Ship. Yeah, I mean, I say that now, that Live Ship over Tawny Man, but you ask me tomorrow, I could change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's probably about as much as we can say without spoilers. So if you haven't read the book, please leave now. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Um, but spoilery thoughts. Where do we start? Where do we start? So, I don't know. Do we... Mm... I kind of want to, like, touch on, like, Rap Skull and... I was just thinking about Rap Skull as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sad about him, actually. Because he was one of my favourite characters and then... He's not so much anymore. And I don't know, like, should we be believing him and what he's saying? Because other people, I can't remember who exactly, but other people allude to other eldlings, like, using memories to learn things and stuff. But, like, obviously it wasn't a great thing that happened to Rapskill in the eyes of other people, but then it is mainly from Thymara's perspective, who is biased. Mm. Yeah, I do miss Innocent Rapskill from book number one. As he moved on... Um, and like rap school teaching Kibi to fly, like was such a such a good mood, like good feeling. <laughs> and the fourth book really, really, really hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, it was such a detour from what we saw. I know, he's <laughs> so sweet, and it just him and Hebe was so precious. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just suddenly was like this warrior thing was taken over. It was really it weird. Was too much. It was like, and that was like the excuse that he had for literally everything. Mm. And I, I mean, I feel like maybe the warrior thing was like an excuse for him to act how he always wanted to act, maybe. Mm. Um, at least give him the confidence that he felt he didn't have even though he was like super confident in his own way, but like he probably just thought he was just like being him and that wasn't accepting to everybody. And then the warrior kind of took over him and made him feel like he could do more. It's hard because like we never get his perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, like he just seemed to be happy with who he was and like yes. embraced who he was. And then... Yes for him to lose because he was just like he was the super like upbeat one and like didn't care what people thought of him was like doing unconventional things that everybody thought was stupid to make his dragon fly and he was the one who succeeded 
and it seems like he like he lost all of that like just innocence and like pure joy about him mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was sad I, yeah I was just gonna say I like what Nikki's saying I was um, just thinking that I'm like so far we have just seen Hob like winners over whereas this one it's like changing the tune which to be fair I suppose if every single unlikable character either had their comeuppance or like turned into someone who we end up loving I probably would have got suspicious at some point I'm like why do we not like just straight up dislike someone like all the character development is a positive thing whereas you know some people develop in a bad way so (laughs) I suppose I would have been suspicious at some point but it is sad to see Rapscal as that person because it's almost like where was the motive though Mm -hmm. we lost Hebe as well because it always used to be like, oh, me and Hebe are going to do this, and Hebe said this, and Hebe's going to do that, and then that just mm-hmm. didn't happen in this book. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it would have been interesting because um, obviously they had similar personalities because they were bonded and they were influencing each other, so it would have been interesting to have a little bit more of like something from Hebe to see how Hebe had changed along with Rapscale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, <laughs> now that you say that, that would have been really nice. Yeah. It, that was like the bigger bummer. Like, can they be malevolent? I mean, that, I think if the elderling was malevolent, right? Because if the elderling that mm. takes over you, it could be, it could be anything. Mm. I feel like they need some sort of like safeguarding to stop malevolent people from being able to record memories that could influence other people in the future. That's so true. So this whole like memory taking over really opened up a can of worms. Mm -hmm. Because like you have you've made like such a great point because it's like well now we we only saw like two perspectives into an elderling society. Yeah we walked the streets where we're just getting glimpses but like that's such a good point because like can everybody impart their memories for later? Mm-hmm. Oh, I never thought of that. It's almost like a, a subdued reincarnation where it's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. can they come back in some way in the future? But yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see if we get more. Did we just give her like a new series idea? Because <laughs> I would want to read that. Of like, what would happen if you have someone who is the bad guy, like, come back later and, like, basically take them over? Then we start with the whole, are they dead or are they dead? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've gotten lots of <laughs> resurrections. <laughs> yeah, this is a good point as well, going from a beat to... Mm-hmm. Because I was going to say it's almost like he just went down the whole toxic masculinity route. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did the Eldling Rapscal was channeling kill the Eldling if I'm remembering? No, he went to look for her and he couldn't find her because she was down the well and he left assuming that she would have evacuated with everybody else but then when he couldn't find her realised that she must have been down the well. So... Is I wish we had a different perspective on the character, like the the elderling whose memories Rapscal took as well, aside from just Thymara, because mm-hmm. he seems like a horrible guy, but I feel like he could be the hero of a story from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Especially because he was like this warrior person, is probably seen as a protector or someone who's really important within that society, whereas we've only seen. Not even the elderling that Thymara was remembering. We just saw Thymara reacting to somebody from Mm. ages ago. Mm -hmm. Completely different society. So it's probably completely normal, if not praised. And they seem to have a massive house. So, like, assumedly Mm -hmm. influential. Mm -hmm. He was some sort of warrior guy and she worked silver. So she was important as well. Did Thymara not want to go into the well because the other old woman died there? I 
think she said something when she was down there about like she doesn't like tight spaces to start off with. She's claustrophobic. Yeah. But um she said when she was down there that like it feels familiar. Mm. Uh-huh. But then she also said that doesn't make any sense because the woman died, she couldn't put the memories of her own death into mm. the stone because she was dead. And mm. she obviously didn't necessarily mind being down a well before that because that was her job. So she kind uh-huh. of claustrophobic. I mean, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we knew it was a dangerous thing anyway. And um, I was quite surprised. I wouldn't say that they were all willing because there was a lot of conversation about how dangerous it was, but um, how suddenly they were all just like, we need to go and get this thing when none of them knew what it was or what it could do. <laughs> I'm just like, um. I, but wasn't that the whole four books? <laughs> much. I'm just like I actually really want to reread Assassin's Quest now just because I want to now that we've spent a lot of time in Kelsinger I want to read Fitz going there yeah. again and exploring to see if I can see the references between the two because obviously there's the thing where he knocked out the window in the map tower mm-hmm. um, but I'm, I'm I know that, the, that Kelsinger is big but I'm surprised that they didn't find the Garden of Stone Dragons Mm. right yeah there it just like for me it really felt like a different place altogether Mm. because yeah they were exploring areas that i was like but that's not what i want you to explore (laughs) that's me when i'm reading the fitz books and he's just not paying attention to anything happening around him (laughs) (sighs) Uh, it's a case of different personality being not only useful but necessary based on the time, situation, and destructive in others. Um, got them a bit further away. Oh, wait, didn't they travel through skill pillars to get to it? Isn't the skill pillars near the dragon garden? I I don't think so. I don't think I, like, Phil, the yeah. Road. They traveled the Silver Road, didn't they? Yeah, they traveled the Silver Road, the the pillar that Fitz went into, right? And then Night Eyes brought him back. It's weird because I was still like along the journey. So I was going to like explain where the pillars are and where the dragons are and where the road is to Kelsingra, but obviously that only makes sense in my head. (laughs) Right, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) But I thought there was three skill pillars. In my head, there's a fork in the road that goes to Kelsingra, but it's a long way away. Um, and then there's the bit where he has the vision of the fool wearing the rooster cry, and that happens next to the pillars in my head. And then on the <laughs> other side of the road, <laughs> there's the dragons. It's a very isolated location in my brain. <laughs> yeah, to, in my brain, the dragons were not near anything. Okay, yeah, a couple of people are saying that the skill pillars are. Okay. I thing. don't I don't even I can't deal with geography in real life, never mind like fantasy ones. Even if I'm looking at a map, there's no correlation in my brain. I'm just like, ah no, they were there somewhere. <laughs> Interesting that none of the eldlings have touched any of the skill pillars yet though, because they've been going around touching all sorts of other things. Hmm. <laughs> I hope expecting someone to like fall through one and just end up in a completely different place. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, they did mention them. They called them different things. And I can't remember what they called them, but they were mentioned. Wasn't near the quarry from what she remembers. Nicole talks about elders who touch, who were touched with silver going to fall through. I don't. Mer- was it no? Was it Merco? Who said that Malta was touched by silver, which is when Amber touched her as the, the boat was leaving the docks. But he said something like, you've been touched with silver and sent on a great journey or something. Mm. With like great importance. And I'm like, what did what did Amber do? Like, I thought it was more of like an accidental touch, not like an intentional touch. But Murkar seemed like Amber had touched Malta intentionally and like sent her off with purpose. This is why, I mean, I have a theory, but I don't think it's right. I just don't know what else to do with it. <laughs> like, okay. I'm seeing things and I'm like, what is this? 
Because this entire time, we don't know anything about the fool's background. Now I'm basically just like, what if where he came from, they are elderlings from like an old time? Because they just say that they're lost. Because there was yeah. certain things. So I wrote down, Ratskal said something about being an elderling, meaning that you live more than one life. We know that the fool has many different mm-hmm. lives, personalities. Um, also, the silver touch didn't phase them. They've got the, the mark on them. Mm-hmm. And he can also speak to dragons, which so far we've put down to the connection with Fitz. Mm. Not be. Mm. I've just got those things, and I'm like, I don't know how plausible it is, but he seems to have a lot of the things that people mention being an elderly thing. <laughs> he did have a lot of silver. Where did he get his silver from? I don't remember what he touched exactly. The Fitz. river. Okay. Didn't he? Wow, this was but a I long time ago. I thought the river was so how did they not find the river? Because I thought he touched the river as well, but they didn't. The, the dragons are looking for the silver and they're not finding it. I thought it was that Fitz had it on his hand or something and then he, like, it's fingerprints he's got. I know. But isn't, isn't the silver spreading along, like, Fitz's hand? That's why he's wearing, or not Fitz, uh, the fool's hand, that's why he's wearing the gloves all the time? Hmm. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> like, I know what I know about silver. <laughs> Fool touched Verity. That, wow, everybody's so much better at remembering than all of us. <laughs> Why are we the people on the live show? <laughs> okay, so where did Verity get it from? Come on, help us out. It's so annoying. I hate it when this happens in a book and you're like, I know that there's something that I needed to remember, but I don't remember it anymore because I didn't know I needed to at the time. Yeah, especially like, I just know that I needed to know specifically what the fool touched. <laughs> was Verity because of the stone dragon, though, which we now know on real dragon? Verity got it from the river. Okay, so I was. Why can't the dragon to find the river? <laughs> Verity reached his hands into the river. The fool to but Verity. <laughs> the fool's is the silver spreading along the fool's hand. Am I making that up, or is it just like it the fingerprints? Oh my god, we're back to geography. The river isn't in Kelsingra; it's by the quarry, isn't it? See, this is where I'm getting confused. I thought the quarry was in Kelsingra, but no, I remember that that's a separate place. Meanwhile, I'm just like rivers are big and can be in all of the places. <laughs> But the Rain Wild River doesn't have silver on it, apparently, which is something that we thought that it did, and that's why, like, what the acidicness was, like, the skill stuff in the river. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also know that the river by Kelsingra doesn't have sil- silver in it, because otherwise they would have been able to find it. I just love the, this description. <laughs> what was the system Verity when Verity was basically super powered skill? <laughs> <laughs> Me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, 4,000 pages and a year and a half ago. His fingers. <laughs> I don't remember it spreading, but it's on his fingers. Okay. Maybe I'm just yeah. uh, making that storyline up as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, I then got... Fool touched Fitz, and Fitz had the handprint, didn't he? Yeah, I got it the wrong way around. Yeah. Okay. But now I'm like, why did Amber take? Her glove off and touch Malta. So then maybe it was for a purpose. There's just still so much that we don't know. Like, I still don't know why, like, the specifics of why the Farseers have the skill. I'm assuming now that it's definitely something to do with silver, but did it end up in their water supply? Are they descended from elderlings? I mean, didn't we come to the theory that the fool will change and everything, like his little purpose in coming and changing fate or whatever, was more down to dragons needing to return for some reason. Yeah. Than it was mm-hmm. bits or anything. So maybe when it came to Malta and touching, that was more a thing of he needed to assure that the elderling thing would happen because knowing mm. he knew that she was he- just- over and needed to go back to Tintaglia and like make that thing and she was going to have a baby and everything then it was Was that when the fool realised that Malta was the one because Amber went looking for one Vestret and I think she thought it was Wintrow Mm. Yeah for sure I think she thought it was Wintrow 
but then it turned out to be Malta, and I think that's when she realised when the the boat was leaving. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it was the best trick she was looking for. Oh no, Wintrow was the one that she was looking for. <laughs> Except that humans would eventually die if touch was over. But Fitz hasn't died. Not this yet. Is a, if oh. she was fainting. Oh yeah, yeah. But he he's been wearing the gloves everywhere. Mm hmm Oh, I did like that um it explained in this why Amber was making stuff and why the stuff that Amber was making was so special. It's because of the silver fingers. Yeah. Mm. That was yeah. cool. I remember that. <laughs> Which he doesn't specifically say in Blood of Dragons, but obviously, if you know, I think they mentioned about like, oh, I knew a woodworker once that made really cool things. If an amber touch more to this skill healed her. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, if she was fainting and he wears the gloves all the time. It would be a really sudden decision to be like, discard the gloves, catcher. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, mm, that seems like a more active choice. Oh, yeah. Amber was looking for a slave boy with a missing finger, but never found him. But that's because Wintro wasn't a slave boy with a missing finger until after Amber had seen all of the best mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was Wintro. Um,. I was getting very confused between Rintro and Selden in this book. I was oh like, my gosh, for me it's Cedric and Selden because it was like Selden woke up and was in a lot of pain and I was like, why was that happening to me? Did anyone audiobook this one? Yeah. The I'm not a fan of this narrator, but like no. this narrator's choices for Selden made that distinction very clear. Like you knew when you were with Selden with this narrator. Yeah. And like this this narrator also just was like I don't know it just made me really not like Selden as much as I thought I would like a grown up Selden this Selden was kind of like a whiny mm -hmm. little bee. I mean I get it right like he's being taken for his yeah. <laughs> it was um it was Selden that made me tear up in this book because it was when well it wasn't him necessarily it was when he was rescued by Rain and Tintaglia and he didn't mm -hmm. know that it was Rain and Rain was said something like, oh, brother, we've been looking for you. <laughs> Cedrin, that's amazing. <laughs> so much we don't know yet, and these are meant to be the final books. It makes me worried we'll have a lot of unanswered questions. I'm kind of worried about that, too. I don't think the Farseers can be descended from Elderlings because it was kind of made clear in this book that anybody the reason the elderlings died out is because without dragons they can't have kids mm -hmm. they would have had to be changed by dragons mm. <laughs> just like thinking real hard and <laughs> trying to think how it all connects but it just i'm not going to be able to do it am I? it definitely has to be silver but how because it manifests so differently in the Farsi as they have the magic but not the scaling or anything. To be fair, even the dragons didn't know that the silver was important until this book, so I think we can, <laughs> we can get off with that. <laughs> but have we, like, come to expect magic to have to have an answer? Like, probably. Because Robin Hobb writes her fantasies way differently than anyone else. And everyone else has answers. And you've got Sanderson with his whole theories of why things have to happen in a certain way. But I think she because doesn't she like is, that way. I think because she is linking things up, it leads me to believe that that does kind of... Because with the live ship traders and the Rainwild Chronicle, she's kind of added depth to the magic in the world. Which leads mm -hmm. me to believe that there are answers it also made me want answers <laughs> then we also know how she always leaves herself room to write more so it's possible mm -hmm. that she just left it mm. and hasn't got to it yet <laughs> that's so possible <laughs> we have a couple of things here so we've got i wonder if the skill of healing can substitute dragon guiding 
And I was going to say to that, well, a lot of this was about how only Tintaglia could heal the baby um, because it was more about the dragon connection than it was the silver itself. I agree. Don't you need a coterie to be able to skill heal? Hmm. In theory, yes. That's what I thought. So isn't that like kind of maybe a dragon connection because it's only people that you bonded with that can heal you throughout? Mm -hmm. Although that could also just be because all of the skill users we have are really weak so they can't do anything together. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, they need the bond to be able to do anything because they don't have the skill, ironically enough, to um, be able to just assess somebody and be like, okay, this is what's wrong and I need to, I know how to fix it, possibly. Mm -hmm. It's also the point that the dragons also thought that humans can't use silver. We, again, are learning this through a very biased mm -hmm. <laughs> um, point of view. Mm -hmm. which the dragons are just like, this is our thing. We mm -hmm. are important. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you uh, um, like these dragons now that we're at the end? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I like them. I think out of like all the dragon books I've read, these don't rank high on my list of dragons. Mm. Oh, I like them. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> you can, I'm actually reading a whole ton of dragon books right now because I accidentally did a vlog earlier in the month that was... I just had three books left on my TBR and they happened to all be dragon books, so now I'm doing the sequels. <laughs> um, and I think of the three types of dragons, these are my favourites. Which ones are you doing? Um, Ruin of Kings. Oh, yeah, that's on my list. Um, the, the, oh my god, what's he called? Rage of Dragons? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that's on my list too. <laughs> so that doesn't have to actually have many dragons in. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. All they're my more like more about the people surrounding the dragons, and the dragons occasionally it's like, oh, there's a dragon flying overhead, as uh -huh. opposed to them actually being characters. Okay. All my books are still packed up, so I'm I'm kind of just kind of limited to what I have on my Kindle and my audiobook listening. Um, the dragon in Ruin of Kings did actually give me like these kind of dragon vibes where they will like the immortal and arrogant and believes that believe that humans are there to serve them. I will say as much as I didn't like them, I appreciated them being that way because I feel like a lot of books that I've read with dragons and are just like oh yeah they see themselves as above everyone and quite arrogant but you don't actually see that whereas in this one it's yeah. just like oh they genuinely think that <laughs> yeah yeah can't believe like you're all gonna sit here and say that you like don't like the dragons endearing. I can't believe you're all gonna sit here and say that you don't like the dragons after Carlo the only the only character in this book with any sense <laughs> <laughs> just saw Hest and was like you know what no <laughs> <laughs> you're out <laughs> I did find it funny when um, Hest was just like, I can speak to dragons. I really genuinely <laughs> thought that he would be able to control this dragon. And I'm like, oh, honey, I'll speak now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad that that was never like followed up on because I'm assuming that Davy knows what he did. Mm. Yeah, we didn't. That so that probably was also one of my least favorite. Even though it was like hilarious, and I was really happy to see Hess get eaten, it was also probably like one of the reasons why I gave this a four star because I'm I'm used to like the pain and the anguish of like a villain getting their comeuppance. This was just like a little too simple for me. I um because I did my vlog up yet. I've only finished the book today. Um, I went into it in my vlog, but it's frustrating because. She creates these horrible characters. Like, Kyle is still, like, I think he's worse than Hest. Like, I hate him so much more than Hest. Mm -hmm. um, even though Hest is also horrible. But she creates characters like Kyle and Hest that you absolutely despise. So you want them to be tortured. Like, I would read 100 pages of Kyle and Hest being tortured. Totally. Um, so, but what she does that I think is actually really clever is that she doesn't make a big dramatic scene about getting rid of these terrible people it happens in like a page and it mm -hmm. signifies to me or like it it makes me think of how insignificant these horrible people are like they don't deserve time and they don't deserve attention 
So, mm-hmm. like, the way that she gets rid of them in a page is, like, representative of how insignificant they are as people, which is cool, but then also, like, frustrating because I want them to be, like, I want to watch them suffer. I want them all to have the same kind of punishment that Kyle did. Like, Kyle's, like, all of his punishments were my favorite villains getting what they deserve situation. <laughs> I loved that, like, because he just got shoved on an island. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody, he went mad and nobody had to suffer through watching him go mad. And then he came back mad and jumped. Did he jump off the side of the boat or something? Mm. I don't remember, but like, yeah, nobody cared about him. Like, his kids were, yeah, his kids wanted nothing to do with him. It was all very satisfying. Mm. See, I think so, because he first had his, like, chopped off yes he was like oh it was a near miss he like scratched me so i thought he was going to be like sent back and just be completely irrelevant because of that because everyone was so like you have to keep up standards and appearances that that would just kind of especially with how they all react to oh my god what was it called where did all of the teeny horn ages come from (laughs) the rain lines yeah so the way that they act towards people who look different to them, I thought that would kind of be a bit of a almost full circle situation where it's like, well, now that you look different in some way and you have a disability, mm-hmm. it that happen, but I'm also glad it didn't because ableism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even remember how Regal died at this point. Did Fitz go visit him after... Did somebody go visit him and kill him? Or did they just threaten him? I forgot Regal even existed. I, yeah, I totally Ooh. forgot did all get, about Regal. It was something to do with the weasel. I loved it. The because weasel Kyle did. came along and made me forget about Regal. Oh, didn't um somebody was bonded to a weasel and didn't Regal kill the guy that he was wit bonded to and the weasel went for him? That's cute. Death by weasel. I love that. <laughs> the royal mama's boy that's regal the pale ass bitch is the pale ass bitch carlos <laughs> snack and chelsea Dean and dad to eldlings are taken out like bitches that's amazing yeah <laughs> carlos little snack <laughs> i love oh when he was like oh yeah i do like you i think i'll call you me <laughs> 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 that was so good. I have um, so I've got tabs in here for when like the silver was mentioned, in case it's relevant to fits in any way when we get back to that. Um, but I have three blue tabs in here, which are my favorite moments, and they are when Elise essentially tells Hess to fuck off, when Cedric tells him to fuck off, and when Carlo <laughs> bites, like, eats him. They were my three favorite moments. <laughs> yeah, that's so true though. Like Elise and um, Cedric getting the chance to tell him off was also really satisfying. I just, I did thoroughly enjoy both of those. Mm-hmm. I think one of the like most noteworthy things in this book to me was Cedric just basically announcing to everybody that is gay so that Hess no longer has a point to make. Yeah. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> I love yeah. how Hess kept coming back to Cedric and was like, well, I'm going to tell everyone you've done this. And he's like, everybody already knows that I've done this. <laughs> and he'd come back like a day later and be like, well, you need to remember that I know you did this. And Cedric's like, yeah, no, everybody knows that I've already done this. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh yeah, that shades weasel. The plot thickens. Although apparently it thickened a long time ago and nobody noticed. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> That's the thing though, like it was pretty much exactly how I imagined with Hess like bounding in and being like, I know all of these things and just being like, no. And it's like, oh, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> His arrogance was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He was like Kyle Light. He wasn't as despicable as Kyle, although he was really despicable. I feel he like he just... could have been. I think if we just saw more of him, because even just the scene where he is leading on the little neon mm-hmm. um, I can't remember his name, but he was very much like, you know. Oh, it was Davi? Yeah. You know. Uh, manipulating him into the sexual abuse, basically. 
Mm. Made me feel ill. Mm -hmm. And like, I knew that was coming. Mm. You know, like reading it, you know, that's where it's going to go. You just have to work your way through it. <laughs> I'm glad that he did get eaten though because um, I remember it's on page 346 so it's the end of chapter um, 15 when Hess gets off the boat and he notices Elise and then he notices Cedric and then he notices Cedric and Carson and he says um, Cedric would regret his faithlessness there, are, there were many ways to hurt a man like him and I'm like, don't you touch my precious baby Cedric. He's <laughs> my favorite character. <laughs> Serious. Um, but yeah, oh no, I'm not a fan. Because it's like, you know men like him. I feel like Kyle was a lot more extreme. Because like, yeah, you know shitty men like Kyle. But not to the extreme of like, they'll sell their children into slavery to teach them a lesson kind of thing. <sighs> like, But you know men like Hest. Mm-hmm. We've all met. We Actually, we've probably all been employed by men like Hest. <laughs> <laughs> we have the appearance of the baby oh yeah I kept getting confused because I forgot that Wintrow was the pirate queen's consort not the pirate king yeah so when it said something about the pirate queen's consort I was like has she left Windrow? like are they <laughs> going on but no he is the consort I do find it really interesting that come the end of this book we now have essentially one family who has each of the siblings as like the head of a different society because Cedric's now probably going to be part of Chalced and mm. everything that's going on there mm -hmm. we've got Winter with the pirate folks we've got Malta who is Rainwild and Queen of the Eldlings yeah Althea is Queen of the Sea mm. <laughs> yes she is <laughs> we basically just sent this family to come in each part of the side of the world I feel like, can you imagine if they all connected somehow, like the stories and fits it's just like, I thought my family was the important one <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Could have more. laughs> the, um, I think it's going to be interesting with what happens with Chelsea going forward and I was wondering because I know people in the chat have said that she is writing another series that we're not allowed to know about because we haven't finished yet um, but I obviously don't know where that spoiler comes because we it was like three books ago that somebody said that. So I was wondering if she's going to write a series about Chelsea with the, um, is she called Chasim being the main character? And mm -hmm. then that would connect to Selden. I think having a whole series on Chelsea would answer so much. Because it's Chelsea and Jamelia, I think, are the only parts of the world that we haven't spent a lot of time in. Mm hmm. I mentioned a lot to say that. Mm hmm. Like so much of the conflicts like that surround Chelsea. Mm -hmm. It would just answer so much. To be fair, if Fitz wanted to, he could come in and be like, you wouldn't exist if it wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> like I made you bitches. <laughs> and like the fools have something to do with all of them again. <laughs> I'm just like It's interesting that in um the um, pursuit of the Eldlings and the knowledge, the white haven't been mentioned. Right, so it goes back to Ashley's theory. Are well, they the have been referenced the because I think, was it Elise who saw a phrase on the wall in the third book that had somebody in a rooster crown? Mm. Yes. So they've been like references to them have been seen but not as in like anything separate to the Eldlings. Yes, correct. The only thing I can't, well, not the only thing, but one thing I can't piece together with the whole, like, elderling theory in relation to them is the other prophet and the whole, like, mm -hmm. all them, the people that were essentially zombies. The um, forged. Yeah. So I'm just like, I don't know what that would be besides them trying to make... So what would happen if a malevolent person gave their memories over to someone? Maybe we just circled all the way back around? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I need Fritz to meet Paragon as well, because I just need to see him come face to face with himself. <laughs> I so do. I think he knows about Paragon now, though, doesn't he? 
I don't think so. I think he knows of it, but I don't think he knows it's got his face. But we did have a reference where somebody recognised Fitz because he's seen Paragon. Yeah, it's um, was it what she called her name begins with J? Jack. Yeah, I think it's Jack. Jill. Mm. It's like three letters, mm. and it begins with J. <laughs> <That's all laughs> yeah. I know. Jack. J A X. Jack. J E K. J E K. I think. Maybe. That sounds better. <laughs> yeah, Jack. Nice. Yeah. Paragon, best character in the whole world. Oh my god, that bit at the end, what does he say? He tells um, Elise and Lefkren to go and make it because he thinks it would be fruitful. And then they tell, they have a go at him for being rude. And he says, well, I'm just saying, like, Tom said that they've been breeding and enjoying it. So, like, they might as well do it now when it's going to be fruitful. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a good point. Did the elderlings lose memories when they store them? I kind of assumed that they didn't. I didn't oh, think so. I don't think. Are they are they putting themselves into the stone the same way like Verity does? Or are they using like silver? That's the thing. I don't, I don't know if it's like we've seen many versions of this whole memory passing thing because from Fitz's point of view you do lose them because he literally gave away his feelings. Yeah. <laughs> But then I don't think it's the same when the elderlings do it. Because I think because well, Verity life, and Fitz they were they don't lose them on the live ships. Which are they don't. Part dragon. <laughs> so maybe when they're full dragon they don't lose them at all and just And end. it doesn't make sense for that guy to spend all of his life putting his memories of how to fight wars into stones if he was gonna lose those memories, because then if somebody attacks he'd be useless. Mm. I think it's just a case of because it was a storm dragon, they lost those memories because they weren't shared. It was just given. Mm. Whereas because the live ships are still alive and the dragons and they've got that connection, they can still keep it going. Like I just always assumed because the stone dragons were some type of manifestation of a faux dragon, that that's why they lost it to the stone dragons because they had to give their memories over in order to bring those dragons to some type of sentience but isn't that in itself some sort of oh well no it is silver because that's what verity verity had silver from touching the river so maybe it's because he's not an elderling that because like i'm pretty sure thymara could make a stone dragon come to life if she wanted to just by telling it to come to life the way that they made, they started making the lid for the well. She wouldn't have to like put herself in it. Hmm. They can lose memories. Paragon took Kenneth's memories. That's right. Hmm. To create a sense of animal versus stones in the sea. That is a point. And, and, um, Oh god. What's her Tintaglia. Tintaglia has like a very strong feeling against the stone dragons. Mm. Doesn't she? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's difficult because as well, like we're theorizing about things from like the first series and because there's been so many books between that have not focused on that. It's and when I think of Tintaglia, my point of reference is live ship, but I keep forgetting that she's in Tawny Man. Yeah. Yeah, but barely. She just, like, kind of... We don't get a lot of her <sighs> until the end. Though. When she went, when Selden showed it to her, she was like, where? Where? And Rin's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then she just goes and clings on the side of the tower. Oh. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see if we get a reference to basically the destruction of childhood by the dragons from like Fitz and everyone's point of view because they've been mm -hmm. praising these stone dragons that they made the entire time. 
<laughs> and it's just like, oh, there's more over there and they've destroyed a city. Cool. Didn't they go to Kelsinger or look at the stone dragons and was like, oh, these are elderlings? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But then they're going to talk to actual dragons and they'll be so offended <laughs> by everything they've assumed about them. Oh, Nikki said it mentions in this one that groups of skilled elders used to put themselves in stone dragons too, I think. Was it? It might have actually mentioned in the live ship traders that um, it's what they do when they're dying so that they can fly with the dragons for a bit. Mm. To... I don't know why they would do that. I guess just to live a bit longer because the stone dragons don't live forever, do they? No. Because oh, they all went, them. like, when Verity's dragon came to life, once they had completed what they were going to do, they all went back and, mm -hmm. like, re-stoned. <laughs> Became stone again. I wonder if it's going to come to a point where the stone dragons all wake up and the real dragons are hanging around and they're like, what is going on? I'm wondering if they're, like, an attempt from past elderlings to bring dragons back because we obviously there was that girl trapped in one if you remember mm -hmm. oh girl on dragon yeah so we just like tried to do something that just didn't work possible yeah they said they don't store knowledge in silver working in the stones oh that be the cartoon scrolls that are lost Possibly. I think, oh, it's just Fitz, man, because, like, he doesn't care about anything. Like, <laughs> not so much more if Fitz gave a shit about anything other than his immediate issue that's, like, bothering him right in that second. So it's just like, than Molly. And we're like, there's dragons, Fitz. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger problems. <laughs> I feel like the opening of the next book is going to be, like, a dragon flies overhead, Fitz looks up, Size and he's like, but why isn't Molly talking to me? <laughs> Literally just like, is that Verity? Thinks about something else. <laughs> I feel like we've got I'm the really answer. excited for y'all to begin the next book. I'm still... I, I'm just gonna wait until we're all on it, and then I'll finish it with y'all. Because I'm halfway through, and the first half is different, and it's it's exciting. <laughs> okay, I was going to be like, good, different, bad, different? It's it's good, different, but it's um, you're back in the world of fits. Things slow down just a little bit. <laughs> it's it's a slower pace. So I um I don't know what the plot of that is because I haven't. I can read the synopsis of the first book now, I guess. But um, because of the book cover that's just fits in the fool riding horses, which I think might actually be fool's errand. I just assume that that's them two going on a, an epic road trip. For three books, <laughs> it's like trotting around the world. <laughs> the well, Fitz is like living the retired country squire life with Molly, but his life is complicated and it doesn't stay that way. <laughs> nice. I'm excited to see them reunited again. <laughs> it's not that the good to. <laughs> This is a total himbo. Agreed. <laughs> we also have this to contend with at some point. The fact that they have to be confronted with the whole Verity is not actually a dragon. Oh my god, I forgot because um, Selden got sent out on singer duties and wasn't that part of his singer duties. Hmm. Yeah, that's singer how we saw Selden in Tawny yeah. Man. Because it was such a brief thing with Selden, I think, in that book that I just forgot. That hmm. You That's when, to me, like, Selden was still, like, cute Selden. And then this All I remember was, was not cute Selden. Is seeing Selden and Fitz together. And Selden being like, you have some kind of ability. And he's like, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. just like, yeah, you do. And he's like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I remember from that. <laughs> oh, dear. Poor Molly, imagine being in love with a man like this. <laughs> uh, to be fair, that is actually a point. What's a fair point? That's his ability is denial. <laughs> <laughs> of all things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because Tintaglia, Tintaglia, he was. Tell him to talk to Fitz. He's on in. Oh, fucking nettle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This. Do we think anything's going to come of um, Baby Afro? Like, do do we? Most of the children in this in this world so far have a purpose. So I'm like, <laughs> do we know how long after this series is the next one set? I don't actually know. Um, like the timeline between these two, I just know. Fitz is like I kind of char- characterized him as like late 40s to 50s mm. how old is he at the end of I thought he was 20, like 30, mid to 30, late 30s yeah he was in his 30s in 21. so that is actually quite a bit after this I think because this overlaps with Tony Man for a little while mm. so this is only over the space of a few years I think I hope so otherwise that was a long trek up the river <laughs> it does actually <laughs> I need to go get my laptop charger so I'm going to do that but I'm also going to work out the timeline as well okay <laughs> I'll be back in like two seconds this is a thing as well after I was the first like born elderling for a long long time so true so I'm just like going to be going to see something with that this is in his 60s that okay that's mm-hmm. right yeah it, there's quite um I, I, feel like I, need, then. I need to make a diagram of like the books on our timeline. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like draw it out which ones I will take when. <laughs> but that's why I like I really do enjoy the start of the book that I read is you just see a little bit aged fits mm-hmm. like as he ages things are uh, he, he has like more perspective. Mm. Not that it's like super great, but <laughs> he has more than than what he had before. Was it thirty years later? Then because he was thirty five, and I don't know if he's in his sixties by the end of it. But he's definitely not a spring chicken. No. If it's thirty years later, then like Efron's going to be in his mid twenties. What do you know? Let's have a look. Right. This is this going to be one of those things again where I'm just like, where have all these siblings popped up from? Because like, we'll just find out in some passive way that Malta and Rain actually had like five children or something. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe they only have the one. Yeah. Maybe the timeline of the map. <laughs> Okay, so this takes place over about seven to eight years because here it says, what's that? This, at the beginning of the first book, is year the sixth of the reign of the most noble and magnificent Satrap Cosco. <laughs> but then eventually it changes to the years of the independent alliance of traders. And I think that's about halfway through this book. Um, and at the end of Blood of Dragons, it's year the seventh of the independent alliance of traders. So I'm going to okay. say seven years and then one for this. That was a long journey up a river. <laughs> but it wasn't because the journey only starts at about the third or fourth year, I think. That's true. Yeah, true. It takes them a while to get it all together. Because right at the beginning of the first book, isn't Thymara like eight or something in the yeah. trees watching the dragon patch? Tiny. Yeah, because this is the eighth. Oh, wait, let's have a look. I'll just do a flick through. In a map, a timeline, and a family trees. <laughs> oh, this series actually happens over one year. Because a lot... A lot changes quickly for Elise and Cedric. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, it starts... It's Thymara's meeting the committee that are picking who's going on day 17th of the growing moon on the sixth year of the Independent Alliance of Traders. And the last one is day the 10th of the greening moon on the seventh year of the Independent Alliance of Traders. 
So how many years did it was it before it changed from the satrap? They say Fool's Assassin is 17 years after Tawny Man. Where are we getting that from? Does it say and I just like missed it? So by the end of the final trilogy, he's in his 60s. Does it cover that much of a lifespan for him? So this takes place over three years and at least two of those years, I think. Is that right? Why can't I do maths? But yeah. We... Three years. So I was judging it from Tintaglia trying to make dragon babies. Because every so often she references, like, I need to lay mm. eggs to make more. But obviously she gets waylaid. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I couldn't really keep up with it. So if this takes place over three years. And at least one of those overlap with Fitz. And the next one's set 30 ish years after, like it's 30 years after Tony Man. Then Efren's going to be like nearly 30. Hmm. All the baby's going to be growing up. Molten, well, no, Molten won't be dead, but like Althea might be dead. People don't live long when there's no modern medicine. Hmm. Or magic for that particular person. And then Wintra, he's like a pirate. He could be dead. Damn. And then suddenly, oh my god, Shade is going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced he will be. I don't think that guy ever I think he's actually an Eldlin. <laughs> <laughs> Has been this entire time. Has been this entire time. Maybe that's why he's got the pocked first scars. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It says the end of Tawny Man takes a while though, because it's the years of Fitz courting Molly again before they marry. Hmm. This is also very true. <laughs> How many types of freaky moon do they have for Sars sake? <laughs> <laughs> But we're assuming there's going to be a Vestrit Fitz tie-in. And there could just not be. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, Robin Hood could just continue. Like, I'm assuming that this is the last Fitz trilogy, no matter what happens, just because of how old he is. Um, but theoretically, providing nothing happens to those characters in um, the next trilogy, she could just continue, but with Nettle as like the main character. Mm -hmm. If she had a reason to. I can't remember how Charles Sid was brought up in Fitz's point of view. Like, why was that important? Because we knew a Charles Sid existed. They're always at war with them. Okay. So we might see Selden through that because now they've had a change of leadership. <laughs> it says um, at the end of Blood of Dragons that Charles Sid are going to try and make peace with Shooks, which is in the Six Drug Cheese. It's one of the Six Drug Cheese. Mm. And somebody laughs and is like, it's never going to happen. Yeah. Are they always at war with Chelsea because they're trying to maintain control of skill pillars? Is that potentially how it could have started? Oh, because actually, something that I did notice about this one is that one of the dragons said that they know through ancestral memory that this is not the first time that this has happened and they've had to go to, like, the dragons have had to fight Chelsea before. So maybe whatever it is that's happening started way back when. Mm -hmm. It has to do something with the dragons because if they're skill pillars and I mean just the way that Chelsea I'm not sure if Chelsea and the Duchies are at one now or they think they're at one or if it did start years ago just because um they don't believe in how Chelsea um does anything really with the slavery and the mm -hmm. raiding and mm -hmm. stuff. Shared will die when bookkeep crumbles into dust. I wonder if Burge's she... mother or I know that I, I know Burge got the, the earring, but um I don't remember which relation if it was a grandmother or a mother. 
Oh, Charles said, and the six, Charles said, and the six don't choose border each other. I forgot about that. Because I think I've seen a map of the world. I had to Google it, but I think it's like Jamalia, Pirate Isles, Big Town, Charles said, Mountain Kingdoms up here, mm -hmm. Red Wilds is over here, and then six don't choose on from Charles said. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how that is referenced and the whole like dragons coming in. Because if it's literally the next place over probably going to have a bit of an effect on them. Mm. <laughs> like, room is in the six duchies. It'll be good because um, I think one of the issues that, because um, Bingtown and the six duchies don't get on either, they're not at war, but they don't like each other. Mm. Um, and part of the reason is because they don't really have anything to do with each other because it's so hard to trade because of Chalced. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did we ever find this out? Like he got the info on eating. That's a good point. I just kind of assumed that. I thought it was just like know. a wacky healing thing that he was going with, but yeah, it was given credibility when it's the blood of dragons that turns people into elderlings. Mm. Yeah. I wonder if they will automatically think it's the same dragons that saved Bucky. Because obviously they don't know that there's more dragons, so I wonder if they're like, they'll be like, oh, the dragons have gone wayward. What's Verity doing? Mm -hmm. Don't you think by now that word would have spread, though? Because that big excursion to Kelsingra made lots of different... Like, people heard about it in lots of different mm, courts. Sure. Mm -hmm. So by that time, they might have known. Or the news of the dragons hatching in the Rainwilds surely would have spread. Depends, though, because I don't think we've seen any information from the room walls to the six dushes. So it depends. Going back the other way. Mm. How separate they are, really. What do you think about Selden's blood making the Duke stronger? I really, really hated those scenes. <laughs> was, I hated them so much. Especially because when I think of Selden, he's a baby. Yes. <laughs> he's a little baby who stood in front of um, Tintaglia in the square in Big Tide. Yes. That's what I mean. That that narrator just like made those scenes. I hated yeah. all of those scenes. I hated the narrator's voice for Selden. He was making him sound like really young. Oh. Yeah, he's like twenty in this, yeah. and like really hoarse all the time, and like he like, just sounded like a damaged child. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh baby. It really made me miss young Selden. <laughs> See, I thought that was more heartbreaking when he defended the girl and was going into like how it feels afterwards when you've been sexually abused and she's like mm -hmm. why don't you help me and he's like because I've been through the same and mm -hmm. my feelings and I'm like uh yeah that was not a not a good time I think it was sad as well because it was Selden I forgot yeah. that he's apparently already met Fitz's mom that's gonna be on my brain now I know when it happened because somebody commented on one of the live shows that we've done and was like, this is where we saw Fitz's mother and she said this and this is what happened. And I was like, cool, thanks. No, you're gonna, what? You're when? To <laughs> um, when did we see her? It is in, I think, because it's such a non-event. So when Fitz goes to the market and I think it's when he finds a wolf or a dog in a cage in mm -hmm. the first trilogy... Somebody shouts a word to him that doesn't make any sense, but it's his actual name. When he finds Night Eyes in the cage? I think so, yeah. He's at That's a market and a assassin. woman shouts to him and then somebody drags the woman away. And she shouts a word at him and I think Fitz looks at her and is like confused about why what's going on. And the word that she shouts to him is his actual name. Mm. Hmm. Well, my book is buried away, so I can't look it up either. <laughs> <laughs> Act but I did put all of my Robin Hobb books in one box and labeled it Hobb. <laughs> 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 like I have like books 
and then I would say what the genre was. It was like books, mm-hmm. Brian it. Sanderson, books, ha, uh, books, SFF. Which is a stupid name, so I'm glad we call him Fitz. <laughs> he sounds like a frog, and I think it's because it sounds like Kermit. Since Lessons Apprentice. How would they know that that's her? I do remember him, like, that name coming up, though, but I don't remember. I wonder if it showed up in his dreams at some point as well. Yeah, because I do remember that name. I'm pretty sure we talked about it at some point. I think somebody commented on something, like, after a live show as well, that said, like, oh, you saw him in the market because she shouted this at him. I'm assuming that that's something that's dealt like explained further in the last trilogy. It's like reference at some point. Mm. But like it's such a non-event. Like I don't even really remember Fitz going to the market aside from Night Eyes being in a cage. So yeah. I had no recollection of that at all. Oh, it's spoilers for the final trilogy that we know. So whoever said that has definitely finished it. Okay, well. He remembers his name at the end of the Tawny Man trilogy when he gets his memories back. Oh, yeah. Okay, I do remember that. It's a weird one, though, because, like, it is a spoiler that, like, he saw his mother, but then also it's not a spoiler because it already happened and it does make (laughs) sense if you think about it. (laughs) It's just, like, at that point you don't really have the context, but I feel like if you reread it, you might come to that conclusion anyway. Yes, I remember in Fool's Fate. Hmm. Hmm. Why are we three the one leading this discussion? Everybody else remembers so much more than <laughs> us. I know. Yeah, <laughs> um, they were mountain folk and the way it's described you can tell it's his mom. Which apparently you can't because I can oh. <laughs> But it's not something I don't think we would have been thinking about at the time. I'm sure we had a conversation about this. But we just didn't know where she was referenced. This is why I should really have taken notes. <laughs> I've taken notes on this one. Eventually, I have all these plans to reread all these other series too. No, I just need to go back and watch our own live shows to see what we're seeing. <laughs> I know people keep asking me to make videos like the Sarah J Maas one that I did recently that dives into like how everything's connected um, oh. and I'm like do you know how many times I have to reread books to be able to do that like I've read Sarah J Maas books over and over and over again but I can't do that with Realm of the Adlings it takes me like three years to read the video to be able to reread the books enough times to be able to make it mm-hmm. yeah but Sarah J Maas was like a little heavy handed with how obvious it was connected <laughs> <laughs> in parts it was like say, pretty in your uh, face <laughs> your, the video that I made was before House of Sky and Breath and I was right on a lot of things like really random things I was like oh okay <laughs> times fun times uh, is there anything I actually we... dnf that one Oof. Sky and Breath yeah I was like oh man I just don't want to do this anymore <laughs> oh, sorry, did you get like 30%. I forget. Like, I think I had gotten to the point where um, Bryce and Hunt just kept going at it and back on their word of waiting. And I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to read this anymore. <laughs> You've taken a, out all the fun of anticipating and waiting. I gave it five stars, but it wasn't the best. <laughs> I've gone to reread the series and I finished it a whole month. A month. If you can finish this whole thing in a month, <laughs> that's impressive. Oh, I was thinking because Gavin's been doing these like I read five thousand books in a month things, yeah. and I was like, oh, maybe I could do like Wheel of Time in a month. And I was like, I could probably read four Wheel of Time books in a month. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> that's probably about it. Oh god. Oh my god, it's Fitz happy. There is one called Bookkeep Radio that I started listening to, but then I stopped because at that point I didn't enjoy podcasts, but I do now. I listen to, I'm going to say a lot of podcasts. It's just a lot of podcasts, just one. <laughs> I'm like way deep. I'm about 100 episodes deep in like the back catalog at the minute. 
wonder if his mother was still alive when everything was happening, Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest. I mean, she might have been that old. So unless she was murdered. I'm going to be Abby again. I really need to pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get me started on this whole audiobook thing because if I see the length of an audiobook and I'm just like, that's doable as if like that's the only thing I need to factor in time wise. <laughs> right. It's like 24 hours. I'm like, yeah, I can read that in less than a day. And I'm like, yeah, maybe if you didn't have to like work and eat and sleep, mm -hmm. this. <laughs> Uh, so, like I have to build my way up to like a two times audio yeah. book listening. I have to like jive with the narrator first, and then slowly build up to the two mm -hmm. two times yeah. speed. I do that too. Yeah, but when Gab does it, it's like smaller books, like Goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. but there, how many Goosebumps books were it? Was he reading like forty? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh... I'm just here with like six a month, <laughs> just vibing. I, I got off to a really good start. <laughs> of course, there's like to kill bums. Um, March, I've only finished one book so far, but I started on um, the first Law Trilogy mm -hmm. by Joe Abercrombie. Now that's a really great audiobook. <laughs> Need a good audiobook. That's a good one. Nice. Great narrator, no complaints. Like <laughs> Chronicles narrator. Oh. I just yeah. get most of my listening done when I'm on my way to work. Yeah. And I took a week off of work to move, so I didn't mm -hmm. finish any books. I'm like that when it comes to cleaning and stuff, and it's like, well, if I don't have any cleaning to do, then I'm just not going to mm -hmm. listen to the audiobook. It's why it took me so long to read this one because I just. I started it, got about halfway through, and then just didn't go back to it for a while. Which I think is why I'm so uh, shady on the details. Mm -hmm. Really want to start Wheel of Time. I want to start Wheel of Time, but I also want to start Malazan. And I don't think I should do both of those at the same time. Mm. And the... um. Actually, we did a big deep dive into it. What's it called? The Rift War Saga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That also connects to whatever. Yeah. If, where is that Raymond D. Feist or Johnny Wurz? Both. That's why they both that. got the separate extended universes, but at some point they cross over, which is just wild. <laughs> so it starts with Raymond D. Feist, but then later in the series, we get both of them. It's just really confusing. I was recommended Raymond E. Feist forever ago, and I have not gotten on that train yet. The mm -hmm. good thing about those books is I think they're only about 400 pages each, but there's like 30 of them. Mm. It's really confusing because their layout puts two in each book, even though they're separate books. <laughs> like the first one that you've got is a bind up of the actual first two books, not. Yeah. That. So. But then on Goodreads, it's just one book, and I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 So confused. Nikki, there are five people in our house. Get a couple hours a day of audio just driving people around. Well, we um, finally, because we moved into a house, we are finally moving my son into his own room. So that means I can read before bed again. Nice. <laughs> so exciting. Now I have my room. How old are you now? 13 years old. Oh my god. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's got the same birthday as Ashley, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. I thought about that, actually. I have no idea what type of fantasy his books are, but I've been recommended, is it David Gemmel before as well? I've seen that name. don't know who that is. haven't started on that one. Um, it's in <laughs> the bookshop that I've got here, the independent bookshop. They have a lot of classic fantasy, do you know, in like the tiny mass market, really old style mm -hmm. covers. They've got tons mm -hmm. of David Gemmel in there. See, I thought you were going to say, is it David Eddings or something? Oh yeah, him as well. Yeah. There's Tad Williams. Maybe That's another else. classic, classic uh, series and author. But I have one book, uh, the Dragonstone Chair. That's actually my sister's fiance's favorite, and I still haven't read it. So maybe for his wedding, I'll I'll re for their my sister <laughs> and his wedding, I'll read the book and be like, read it. <laughs> this is your wedding present. Here's your wedding present. Um, David Gemmell looks like he writes military fantasy, but like the old style. 
military mm-hmm. fantasy. Like the first line of this synopsis is, he is a man of many names. Some call him the golden one, others the lord of the silver bow. But to the Dardanians, he is Prince Aeneas. But to his friends, he is Hel- 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 Helicaon. <laughs> Strong, fast, quick of mind. He's a bold warrior, hated by his enemies, feared even by his Trojan allies. Dun, dun, dun. Discworld and Honor Harrington. I don't know if I like Discworld because of the humour. Yeah, I've only read one and every time I say which one, people are like, you read one of the worst ones and I'm like, yeah, but I can tell that I don't get along with the humour. That's why I'm not continuing. Because <laughs> I'm just like... I, a lot of books, you'll hear a criticism from me a lot is that it was trying to be funny and I just didn't find it funny. So I think Terry Pratchett is one of those people for me. I think I'm, because like I said, I'm reading this series at the minute, mm. um, the Jen Lyons ones, and it's told in like a, not like a light way, but it kind of reminds me of people being sat around telling a story of something that happened. Mm. Like, so they'll, it's not necessarily light, but that it's got more of a conversational tone to it, like somebody's telling the story, because they are throughout mm. this. Um, whereas I like my fantasy really dark and serious. <laughs> yeah. So like, it's not quite, it is a little bit funny, but like it's just lighter than my typical taste. Like I like people brooding in the corner about all of the people that they accidentally killed. <laughs> yeah, I um, I had to have like a conversation with myself at the beginning of the year of being like, you know, you don't have to read over 500 plus page fantasy books that are all really dark and depressing like you you could read other things <laughs> so i read i read the heartstopper uh, graphic novel mm-hmm. series i read all four of those They're so cute because i was like you can you can read other things <laughs> <laughs> let's read hobbs of the series yeah so just some um... after i've finish the realm of the eldlings i'm gonna like have a bit of a break and then dive into those but i'm curious to see how they compare yeah that's what i've heard i have the whole trilogy and i've just been kind of sitting on that one i don't think it's much the series neither do i but people keep trying to convince me and i'm just like no the more you try and convince me the more i'm gonna say no <laughs> i think it's just because there's so many of them as well like they're not long but there's <laughs> 40 or something yeah, there's a lot of them. One book seven of the time, super frustrated with how he writes women. Um, that no. is always the worry with classic fantasy. Mm. Which, I mean, that's not necessarily classic. I think it's mid-90s, but... Interesting that you say this, because I also will never touch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy just from one little like paragraph that I read and was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty spot on. I'll avoid both. <laughs> I won't be reading Hitchhiker's Guide because my uh, I had an ex boyfriend that was really into it, and so now I just associate it with him. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is the thing I'm worried about as well. Like expectations way too high. Mm. Oh. Soldier Summer is just all the depression of fits and no levity. You know what? That's, that's probably will do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like funny to be actually witty and cleverly funny, not just buzzard and foolish for comedy's sake. Yeah, like an example of how these books are kind of funny but not like overly humorous is that they'll say like, Oh, we approached this fortress um, in the winter. It was like cold, wet, and stuffy. I imagine in summer it'll be hot, wet, and stuffy, like that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's just okay. It's just lighter, more light in the text than I actually normally enjoy. Um, but it then pairs it with stuff like forced prostitution and slavery and sexual assault. So it's mm-hmm. like a weird mix. But I don't know the books that you wouldn't think that I would like normally, but for some reason I do. Mm-hmm. This is a possibly. We have not yet decided, but probably. it's probably the most up there with contenders so far, although Cass has just said she's reading first law, so. <laughs> I just uh, finished book one, but I can pause. 
and <laughs> hold that thought. <laughs> I think it's either at this point, it's either like First Law or something like Malazan, and I'm like, that nah, it's just. Okay. I need people to read Malazan with because there's no way I th- that one from everything I've heard, it's not easy. <laughs> Copied Hobbs of the series, can't fit them on my shelf. Yeah, I've had to uh, Tetris all mine in. Um, completely turned off reading classic fantasy by my assumption of the way women will be written and also that they will be overhyped. Mm. Also, like a product of their time, like if you're being recommended Raymond E. Feist by somebody who's in the 50s, like and read them when they were in like the 20s it's a different time now so like it's not necessarily going to be good now kind of thing mm-hmm. that's funny would it be catch a book club mm-hmm. if Cass wasn't six books ever <laughs> <laughs> and if Bro, Cody was, was three, up, books, Cass. three books <laughs> it was literally catching up to Cass so that's what it is <laughs> okay yeah I think we are wrapping this one up since we've just completely detoured from mm-hmm. the I love how we could do something like a trilogy as well, but I refuse to make graphics for a trilogy, so like it has to be long. <laughs> <laughs> like not doing it. But yeah, let's uh, wrap this one on up. Luckily, we're going back to. I say, luckily, at least we're going back to. Let's see who it's not. show sure is second weekend in May, I think. Or th- is it technically the third weekend? weekend. Oh, let's look. Let's look. Let's look. My birthday is on a Thursday, sixth, seventh, eighth. I think it's like the fifteenth. Oh, is this yeah. the one? It's like you've got one weekend if you want me in May, so it has to be that one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good on that weekend. Fifteenth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we're aiming for the fifteenth. Our Ashley's not coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kelly just asked that question, and I didn't even realize, and I'm already answering it. <laughs> First of May is a Sunday, okay, so it's the third Sunday in May. The 15th of May is yes. when we're aiming for. But, um... Liz, my birthday is on the 5th of May, and the weekend that follows is my birthday weekend, and it's not going to be on my birthday weekend, so like, <laughs> it's the week after that. Yeah. That's what I'm remembering. <laughs> oh my god, Ewald, no! <laughs> <laughs> Please! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Twinning! Love that. Fool's assassin is like tea with honey on a cold day. I mean, maybe it if it's cold, it is. Down. <laughs> it is, though. I totally agree with that. Why is there so many of you born at the beginning of May? This is getting ridiculous. Oh, Gavin's the seventh. You've got a friend who's the sixth as well. Yeah. My sister is the fourth. Wow. Come on, we, can, we can get the whole. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Got the oh, whole week. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> we need a second and a third. <laughs> what month was everyone getting pregnant if everyone's born in May? August? Yeah, I think so. Seems like an odd month. It might have been that late summer heat. <laughs> getting to everyone. <laughs> anyway, on that note. <laughs> Let's wrap this one up. Um, and we shall see you when we see you on the 15th of May. If not, we'll keep you updated. We will keep you updated either way. But thank you for joining us. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>